Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned to Bob Ryan earlier, I was in Boston for a few days, and I went to visit my son who was in grad school in Boston, and I went up essentially with um, Alan Bubis, father of the great intern Nathan Bubis, we love because Nathan, Nathan is Thanks. also in school in Boston. That's right. So what we agreed to do was we were going to play golf on Friday. Alan and I and Michael and Nathan were going to play golf on Friday. And I went out earlier. I went out on Thursday to play golf uh, with Alan, not with our sons. And we went to play this place, Charles River. And it was great. We had a wonderful time. And the weather was beautiful. It was probably around 65 to 70 degrees. Sun was out. It was great. And on Friday, it turned rainy. And we decided we would, because I said to Alan, the weather forecast is bad. And he said, well, let's at least go to the golf course. Let's go and let's see what happens. So we went to this golf course, Belmont Country Club. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. The first few holes were absolutely gorgeous, but it was quite wet. And none of us really wanted to play. Because I, I, Michael even said to me, why are we out here? And I say what I always say. I'm out here for you, to give you a better life. That's what you want, kid. And he goes, I don't really want this life. It's raining. I don't want to play in the rain. Nathan didn't want to play in the rain, but Alan and I insisted that we play in the rain. And so we go out there, and we are probably the only people on this golf course, Belmont Country Club. And that is in Newton or West Newton or wherever. Beautiful. Wherever it is is gorgeous. Maybe it's just in Belmont. Okay, so we're out there. And we play three holes, and we get to the fourth hole, and the fourth hole is a par five, and there's a crest about 300 yards out, uh, and you know, and I figured that maybe if I got lucky, I'd get a second shot over that ridge, maybe not. Anyway, Michael hit the ball to the right. I'm in the cart with my own son, with Michael, and Michael hasn't played in a long time and was just hacking around and was way off to the right somewhere, was basically off the track and trying to find his ball, and Alan and Nathan were somewhere on the left. And so I'm driving the cart to my ball, and it's fairly slick. And, then, you know, you don't want to drive fast in a golf cart. You don't have a lot of control right. on a golf cart. And I'm driving, and suddenly the golf cart begins, as I hit the top of the hill, the golf cart begins to spin wildly. And I realize that I am not in control of the golf cart. There's nothing much I can do because we're going backwards now. Oh, boy. And we go backwards for a little while, and by we, I mean me and my clubs, because there's nobody else in the golf cart. We have a four caddy whose name is John, but he's out trying to find the balls of the people. I know where mine is. It begins to go backwards, and it begins to spin chaotically, and I feel myself being thrown from the golf cart and say to myself in those moments that one has of clarity, my God, I'm being flipped. What a way to right go. Right here. I'm being flipped. And I go out of the golf cart. And the next thing that happens is I hear, before I feel it, I hear the back of my head crack on the concrete, Ooh. the concrete of a path. Then I feel it, and I don't black out. I am thrown. I smash my head. But I'm not unconscious. I don't see stars. And I get to my feet. Doesn't, I mean, fortunately, it didn't hurt my knee or anything like that. I get to my feet, though. I also, after I crack my head, then I land on my tailbone. The rest of me hits mm. the concrete. Now, if I had landed on the grass or the dirt, I don't think anything much would have happened. But I reach to the back of my head with my right hand, and I pull my hand away, and it's covered in warm red blood. And it is covered in warm red blood. And I go, ooh, this is this can't be good. And the caddy, John, looks at me and he goes, we're done here. We got to get you right back in. We got to get an ambulance. And I go, we got to get an ambulance. And he says, I think you need to get an ambulance. And he puts towels on the back of my head. And every once in a while, I pull the towels away. And they're soaked in blood. <laughs> they're soaked in blood. The rest of me doesn't hurt yet. Because the only thing that the only thing I feel right now is the back Probably of my head. Probably got the adrenaline. Yeah, back of my head is basically too. split open, or I think it's split open, but I don't know because it's the back of my head. Everybody comes in, and we go into the pro shop, um, and and by this time the blood has sort of coagulated. 
it is still bleeding, but it's not bleeding like it was, not spurting out, even though I couldn't see that because it's on the back of my head. Where was it, the cut? Back here. Oh, the back of your head, okay. Back, the back it's of not my a head. Clint Malarchuk situation. Remember Malarchuk, the goalie, where the blood was spurting yeah. out of his no, neck? No, that he almost he could no, have This died. was on the back, back of his of, head. Back of the head, yeah. So everybody looks at it, and they 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 say, what do you want to do? And I go, well, I think I feel fine. And a bunch of people say, you know, really. You're not, like, dizzy or anything? From... I'm, not, I'm not dizzy, right. but this could be adrenaline. Um, and everybody says, you know, what you really ought to do is you really we really ought to call the Belmont um, EMS people, and you probably ought to go to a hospital. And I go, I don't really think I need to go to a hospital. So I, you probably don't, but you, you should be safe rather right. than Obama's sorry. picking it up. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it should be safe rather than sorry. So I agree to do that. Then the next thing I know, there's an am, two ambulances pulling into the parking two. lot. Two ambulances, and six to eight guys get out. And they go, you're going to have to get in the board. We're going to have to strap you down. And I go, I don't really think I need that. Can I that. just walk? <laughs> I don't really think I need that. So I said, okay, well, you can walk to the ambulance. We'll let you walk to the ambulance. But then you have to go in. And so I had to be put on a stretcher, tied down my legs, my abdomen, worst of all, my neck. Um, and then the guy says to me, who's taking me, he's with me in the ambulance. Now we're going to go to the hospital. And he says, this is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> it took, I don't know, 30 minutes to get to the hospital. And a little bit bumpy, can't describe it. If I'd had a gunshot wound, I'd have bled to death just from the bumps. <laughs> the ambulance ride is worse than the yeah, golf cart ride. How are you a half an hour from a hospital? The traffic, it was Friday afternoon, oh, it was rush God. hour. The ambulance ride was awful. Hmm. And, and you're I, on your back. You're tied down on and your I back. And I began to get nauseated. That's yeah. when you got sick. And I thought I was going to throw up. Yeah. And and I said, like look. Bieber. I said, please. Yeah, but he threw up twice in a concert. I was going to just throw up once. I said, could you do me a favor? I need to sit up. And he goes, we can't let you sit up. The protocol, we can't let you sit up. Got to pass that concussion test put, before yeah, you can go back in the game. They had put my head back on ice, and that really helped a lot. Yeah, that, probably. The ice stopped a lot of the bleeding. Right. I get to the hospital, and finally, a doctor comes to see me, and the doctor says, what happened? I said, just let me sit up, please. And so I was able to sit up. Then I had to go, by that time, the blood had coagulated. They didn't even think they need stitches. They cleaned it up, but they said, you need to take a CAT scan. We need to see. When there's a head wound like yeah. this, we need to see I mean, you if hit your concrete. head has been scrambled. Yeah. But I hit. I hit a golf cart path. That's nothing but asphalt and concrete. I take a CAT scan, um, and, and the people at this hospital, Mount Auburn Hospital in Cambridge, were very, very nice. They were very, very nice. I don't want to say that it was expedited because they knew who I was, but it's conceivable. It's conceivable it was because some people knew who I was, but others did not. The guy taking the information at Belmont before I got into the ambulance had no idea who I was. And then two or three other guys did. Mm -hmm. and, and but Moved they ahead of the littles, I would hope, yeah. Huh? I moved you ahead of the littles. Well, there were no littles in the ambulance. No, but people I was who, in the who others who were, might be bleeding to death from the back of their head. You might have moved to the front of the line. Uh, one can only hope. Yeah. So I took a CAT scan. And they were they... podcasters. They'd have taken a look at your knee as well, though. <laughs> yeah. So you know they don't listen. <laughs> right. Cat, the CAT scan was fine. Dr. Jason, I wrote his name down. Eh, lost the name. doesn't really How's that? Is that like an MRI situation? Dr. You Jason go for that, for CAT yes, scan? Never a, had that. It's sort of, it was actually open. Okay, it, I mean, you, 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 you are pushed mm. in and out, pushed in and out. And it's, you know, you close your eyes and it doesn't really matter. So what I got going for me is I don't have anything like I have no frogs growing in my head, apparently, right. or something no like that. No brain injury. That, that good. Good. No brain injury. So they, they released me and, and, and Alan and Nathan and Michael went to the hospital and stayed with me, even though I said, go, don't worry about right, it. They, total they day did killer. All of that. Yeah, it you. was. Well, what Alan said was we had committed to four hours with you, and this used up all four, so we're <laughs> leaving now after we drop you off at your hotel. And I was, and and then yesterday and today, had to be sore. The tailbone, my head is not sore. The tailbone part is like it's so hard to get up and down to sit. Every time you sit, and that, and all of that is going to get better. But it was, I don't want to say it was tremendously frightening, although the thud. And I remember hearing a thud like that many, many, many years ago when David Thompson smashed his head Ooh, yeah. against Pittsburgh in the semifinal game of the Eastern Regional Final in North Carolina, and you heard his head 
hit the hardwood. Yep, I remember. You that. know, came back with a turban around his head. Yeah, like from you know Revolutionary War. Yeah, John stuff Olaru. Did it like sound at all like when Johnny Sack got run over in the Sopranos? <laughs> well, at the gas station. <laughs> no, because that actually made his head into an egg and crushed his head. Was it Johnny Sack or Phil? Uh, it was Phil. Phil Leotardo. Phil Leotardo. Phil Leotardo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So well, the takeaway for me was this. I'm old. This was that moment in my life when you go, boy, you're over 60 years old. You just got flung out of a golf cart. Maybe it wasn't your fault. Maybe it was. I don't think I was going pretty fast, but it was really slick, and and those things happen. And I said, this is it. This is it. And I determined when I was out of the hospital and I went back to the hotel and I sort of sat alone because I threw Carol out. I, I just wanted to sort of be alone just for a little while. I thought, I'm quitting everything. I'm quitting the radio. I'm quitting the TV. I'm too old now. I look old. You're the I Billy fe- Joel, Nigel. I feel old. It doesn't work. <laughs> and then I had a couple of drinks. And I said, this is really <laughs> stupid. Just uh, wear a helmet when you, you play gotta golf. Keep, you, that's when it ends. When you stop doing the stuff. Yeah. Is when it, what you're describing sounds like it would have gotten any. I mean, do you think 15 years ago you were able to avoid getting hurt? No. Right. No, because I mean, so, have you ever been – you don't play a lot of golf. You ever been flipped out of a – Yeah, I, but, I, but I was, typically it was intended. You were drunk. It was intentional, <laughs> yeah. But here's how lucky I was, honestly. If the golf cart spins around and lands on me and rolls over me and rolls over my head, yeah. Yeah. I'm then dead. It's Philly if yeah. I get flung Hopefully into a video. tree – when there are trees all around there, something much worse can happen. It was the back of my head. If I get planted on this thing, my whole face is cut up for weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, I had great fortune in that I landed. It would have been nicer to land on the grass, but at least it was on the back of my head, and I did not black out. That's the first question they ask you, were you unconscious yeah. on any level? And I said, no, to my knowledge, no. Nobody saw it. None of the people I was playing with saw You were saw behind it. them all? And they were up ahead on foot or what? Michael was down in the oh, right. Oh, there was a little... Nathan, uh, yeah, yeah, Nathan and Alan were down on the left. uphill. Yeah, yeah I, and I was... So who, so who found... I mean, did you get screen? up? I got right up. Oh, okay. I got right up and I just said, whoa. Standing eight. And then I went back to the cart. And was the cart the, on its side or... The cart had stood up. Okay. The cart had spun around, but the cart had stood up, and then I reached. Now, what was great So were was, you tossed by, like, centrifugal I force? So. You were, like, spinning around? Yeah, spinning and... around, going backwards, tossed out of the okay. cart. Holy cow. What I, the, the line that was most memorable to me was the caddy's line, John. And John says, we've got to stop right now. And I go, you sure? And he goes, my brother is a doctor, and he would have you stop right now. And I thought... Wow, he did well, and you're a caddy. Well, <laughs> you know, that's your first thought. I was, so that way, so you I judged knew, him instantly. I knew yeah. I was okay. Right, at that right, point. right, right. I knew that my brain was functioning in the way it should function, and then, so I mean, I don't want to say that. And then you know, the next day, I, I, I went home the next day, and you know, and it didn't. It didn't even ruin the weekend. I mean, it didn't. It's just a story to tell because it never happened to me before. And I mentioned it to Wilbon yesterday, and Wilbon said. He flipped Maddie out of a, out of a cart a few years back by mistake. His son went face first, but into the dirt. Into the dirt. You go in the dirt, it's okay. You go into the grass, it's, even if you go backwards, you're not. That's probably not. So take happen. off the hat. Let's see the damage. No, it's well, it's in the back. It's mm. the oh wow. It's, it's not that bad. I don't think. <laughs> Is it that bad? Yeah, I, I yeah. You got a, a big you have a big patch about the size of a silver dollar, and yeah. it's all black and blue yeah. and scab. Yeah, it's yeah, nasty. So that's not going to be put that great. hat back on. <laughs> well, that's why I probably will try to do the show today in a on hat. TV. In a hat? Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. probably try and do it in a hat. Like Bert well, Sugar. I mean, they, you wouldn't yeah, see it. Be like that a show. Well, but it hurts. It hurts a little, and I washing it is. Yeah, it looks like very sensitive. Uh, we will do what? We will have news with uh, with Kevin. Kevin will walk that's in. Right. I'm Tony Kornheiser. This is the Tony Kornheiser Show on ESPN 980. It's Jan and Dean, isn't it? Is this Dead Man's Curve? Well, I haven't heard this in a long time. <laughs> this refers to the fact that I flipped myself out of a golf cart. golf cart and smashed my own head. I don't know if I can even go on PTI today. It's God's will. Without a hat. It wasn't, it, yes, it was God's will. Yes, it was. One. Kevin is here with news. Tony, there's some breaking NFL news uh, this morning. Colts coach Chuck Pagano has what ESPN is reporting, a treatable form of leukemia. He's going to miss the next six weeks as the Colts head coach and Bruce Arians, the offensive coordinator, uh, will take over. 
You know, my feeling about this is is that I don't really think that medical news on people who are not the president of the United States is all that important, and you should have a certain... <laughs> Says the guy who just did 20 minutes well, on his my, head injury. I chose to do that. I chose to do that. I mean, you know, I... Yeah, I'm glad I mean, it's treatable. But, glad he's it, but they'd games. have to explain. They'd have to explain why he wasn't yeah, right. Not on the sidelines. Yeah. Okay. It's sad. So we hope we hope Hopefully he does well. He gets a full we hope recovery. he does well. We're treatable. We hope he does well. Wish him well. Yeah. Um, for sure. Here's Shad's uh, missive for today: three and a half go- holes of golf with your son, three hundred dollars. Ambulance ride from hell to the hospital, fifteen hundred dollars. Cat scan by Doctor Jason, something or other, three thousand dollars. Making a joke about your underachieving caddy and his overachieving doctor brother to realize your mind is not yet enfeebled, priceless. So we got that going for me, which is, uh, which is nice. Email when we return. I'm Tony Kornheiser. This is the Tony Kornheiser Show on ESPN 980. Here comes Tony's mailbag. Got your email factors and your notes. Here comes Tony's mailbag. Gonna read some for all you folks. Good job, Gary. And are we sponsored today, Nigel? We are, dear Mr. Tony. Brought to you by Mervis Diamond Importers. Nobody pays retail anymore, so why should you? From Jeff Klein in Providence, Rhode Island. Can the Friday golf accident best be described by the acronym BIPSUK? Ball in pocket, spinning out of cart? <laughs> and more importantly, did, did you give the caddy a signed PTI hat? <laughs> or did you just sign the towel used for catching the blood spurting out of your head? I bet his doctor brother doesn't have anything as cool as that. <laughs> From Brian Chillette in Monroe, Louisiana. After searching high and low for the perfect Mr. Tony show, I finally found it. Animal Intervention on the Nat Geo channel shows these insane owners that house exotic Jack. animals in their houses. In the first episode, the magician, yes, magician, <laughs> shows his collection of tigers and other cats. Later, he brings one in the room, and as he's talking about the cat being safe and loving him, it slaps him in the face Good. and drags him Good. out of the room. <laughs> Good. My only regret is that he didn't play with the cat long enough to get his lungs ripped out. <laughs> Jeff Towery, Springfield, Oregon, Bip Look. Ball in pocket, laying under cart. <laughs> Josh Cromwell, Moselle, Mississippi. I'm glad to hear you're okay. It's never a good sign when you end a round of golf by being bitbock. Ball in pocket, blood on concrete. <laughs> Justin in Washington, shout out to the new phrase you created. Ball in pocket, bleeding to death, insulting the caddy. <laughs> Even in moments of great peril, you're still the same snarky old orange bald man, and that's why we love you. Thanks for never forgetting where you come from. <laughs> From Jeff Piggott in um, Des Moines, Iowa. Very sorry to hear of your accident on the golf course, but when listening to the excruciating details of the injury and the treatment, I could think of only one thing. How long did it take Tony to call John the caddy and send him back out in the rain to fetch his brick stuff? <laughs> uh, Tim Cree, Fort Collins, Colorado. Just out of curiosity, if you did get thrown from a golf cart and crushed to death, would the obituary be held up in the papers for three days due to the podcast delay? <laughs> Would we thereafter refer to you as being on permanent radio show hiatus? <laughs> Always showing the appropriate sensitivity. <laughs> Dr. Mike Gessner, it's a good thing you didn't throw up in the ambulance. Think of the obit. Mr. Kornheiser died when he choked on his own vomit Ugh. while riding in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. See, this is... I knew that eventually... When the podcast came out, people would be concerned over the fact that I almost died and smashed my head on the on the card pass. So I'm very happy about that. Very happy people have done this. From Jesse Howe in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm a longtime listener who grew up in Maryland and a first-time emailer. I write because yesterday as I was hunting elk, I was bluff-charged by a female grizzly bear who ended up about three feet from me before abruptly turning around and sauntering off. As she walked away, my heartbeat slowed down, and I thought, man, I really wanted to end up in the mailbag and not on Kevin's newsreel from my Mr. Tony reference, so here's hoping I do. Perhaps this signifies that the impending takeover is not as imminent as we have all led, Bluff led to believe. I like that. Jim Reynolds <laughs> in Rochester. Remember the other day I talked about how Kodak was out of business and everybody was going down in Rochester? As a loyal little, little who dutifully screams your, streams your broadcast to my office in the research labs at Eastman Kodak, I took exception to your comment that Kodak no longer exists, right? I think Kodak's under 13,000 employees <laughs> would agree with me. True, Kodak did declare Chapter 11 in January of this year and is currently restructuring its business. It will no longer be the consumer-oriented company that defined it for most of its 124-year existence. However, it will continue to serve many customers as a provider of commercial printing and business services to the tune of several billion dollars per year. Also, despite Kodak's woes, Rochester, New York is thriving and leads upstate New York in jobs created since the 2000 
2008 recession. And so I was wrong about everything. Go Bills. Hopefully some of these misconceptions will be remedied during the broadcast of the 2013 PJ Championship from Oak Hill. I already have my tickets and look forward to seeing you there. Shall I arrange for a golf cart for you? <laughs> from Charlie Burks in Springfield, Virginia. Top five surprises in last night's presidential debate. Number five, Romney's choice of a fistful of dollars outfit. Number four, Obama's 14-minute demo of brewing the new White House beer. Number three, Romney's health care plan exclusion of any pre-existing golf cart hydroplaning situation. Number two, Obama's guarantee that B3 will go down for the season this week. And number one, Romney's reluctant admission that his brother is a golf caddy. That is really, really (laughs) smart. Bill in Fairfax, always be careful when driving golf carts on hard paths because, as you should be aware, from your long-time stint as a sports writer, concrete is pretty much undefeated during its long-standing rivalry with skulls. Yes, it's, my head got smashed up. It, it's very nice. Uh, we don't, I, these are very good email, and I want to get to more, but I can't do it today. If you're out on your bike time, everybody, as always, do wear white. Hey, what happened? <laughs> and I can't do my work.